So, as I said, this is Python's interactive session, the Python shell, where you can just type anything you want and press enter and see the results. So, the first thing I'm going to teach you is a print command. Now, the print command does exactly what it says. It prints whatever you want it to. So, it can print texts. It can print text, I mean. It can print numbers. Well, that comes under text, really. It can print variables, which we're going to come on to in a minute. And it can print tons of other stuff, which we'll learn about in episodes 2, episodes 3, etc, etc, etc. So, type in print, P-R-I-N-T, open bracket, and then the quotation mark. And it doesn't matter which kind of quotation mark it is. It could be the double quotation mark, or it could be the single. But all that matters is, it, is when you end the sequence, you use the same quotation mark that you did. So I'm just going to use the single ones. And then type in the message that you want. Now it's kind of traditional for your first program to be hello world which is where you get the computer to print the phrase hello world. So if we do hello world and then we finish it with the same quotation mark that we started with, in my case a single one, and then close the brackets. Now as you can see Python has changed the colours of the the stuff that we just typed in. So print has gone this colour because it's a function and hello world has also changed colour. Now we press enter on your keyboard then you're going to see hello world printed on the screen and this is what I mean by the Python shell being an interactive session. You can press enter and see the results immediately. Now as I said before this isn't perfect for everything. How, how would I make a really long complex program that say checks on a sensor here and does this what you do is you go into file and then new window and you'll probably recognize new window if you've seen any of my other video tutorials or you can press control M so the next thing we're going to do is have a look at commenting your code and also variables so click on new window and a new window will pop up I'll just drag it here now your window will be called untitled and you'll see file, edit, format, run, options, windows and help up here. Now you'll also see that you can put as many lines of code here as you want, infinite amounts. Now this is great, so you can make your, your, your code as long as you like and make a program as big as you want or as small as you want. However, you, you have to save it before you run it. With the Python shell you didn't need to save anything. However, with the the new window, the window, um, you have to if you want to run module, you click run module, and it will prompt you to save it, and you have to save it before you actually are able to run the module. So, the next thing I'm going to teach you about is commenting. Now, commenting your code is really useful. So, by commenting, I mean telling the person looking at your code what's actually happening. Now. If I put a hashtag and then a comment, whatever that comment is, like this part of the code, I can spell code right, does dot dot dot. Now, as soon as that computer sees the hashtag, it's going to skip that line of code. So the computer isn't going to take any notice of it at all. But say I'm sharing this code with someone, or say I come back to this program in four months' time and, and I'm trying to understand it. It's, it can be quite complicated, especially with a primitive knowledge of Python, which is what you'll have at the moment, to understand what you did so long ago, or, or if a friend is trying to decipher your code. Commenting puts in an element of humanised language into your code, and that makes it easy to understand. So let's delete that part and put a hashtag and say learning variables. And that's exactly what we're going to be coming on to in a minute. Now, next thing you need to know is Python is capital letter sensitive. It's also space sensitive. And if you don't type in things exactly as um, I've said or as the book that you're following has said or or anything says, then it's not going to work. So say I type in the command print in capital letters. Now, 
Python isn't going to recognise it because it only recognises print in lowercase letters. And you'll be able to tell because it goes blue. So, what, we get, what we're now going to do is learn about variables. Now, variables is what I like to think of as nicknaming things. Now, so basically what you do is you assign whatever you want to a word. Now, there's a few rules to variables. One, it can't start with a number. And two, it can't have these special characters in, like, uh, asterisks and... Um, other quite weird things that you find on your keyboard like squiggly brackets etc 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 so let's say we want to name a variable raspberry pi guy and now that means nothing to the computer at the moment what we then put is a space and an equals sign and then another space and then and then the thing that we want to assign to it so I could assign it a phrase I could assign it, this is a variable, etc, etc, etc. But let's assign it a number for now. So let's, let's assign it the meaning of life, 42. And then what we've done is we've initialised a variable. So initialising a variable is telling the computer that it's there, and that this is a variable, and that if it comes up, you should print whatever. But... It also means that nothing, if you ran this program now, nothing's going to happen because you haven't done it, told it to do anything with that variable. So what we should do now is get it to print the variable. So type in print, print function, and then open bracket, and then raspberry pi guy, or whatever you've named your variable. Now, note you don't need the quotation marks in here. This is because that's a variable. And then close the brackets. So now what we're going to do is we're going to click Run, and then Run Module, or you can press F5 on your keyboard. Press OK to save. Let's just call this test. Yep, I know it already exists, I want to overwrite it. And then what it will do is it will pop up the Python shell, and you will see this line of text here, where it tells, where it says Python shell is restarting, and the code is about to commence. And then we can see here our number 42. Now this is because uh, we called the variable Raspberry Pi Guy, and 42 is assigned to Raspberry Pi Guy, so it's just going to print sort of the thing behind Raspberry Pi Guy. So variables are really useful in Python and in every programming language. You're going to come across them loads of places, and uh, you'll definitely be able to use them lots. It, when you're programming and also they'll come up loads in my episodes, my next episodes which I'm sure will follow in the uh, in the weeks to come. I'm sorry that this tutorial has been quite out of date because I've, I've kept promising you tutorials and then not fulfilling my promises because I've been quite busy at the moment. Please check out the January edition of the Magpie where I'll be doing an article on SSH and be sure to have a look at the Raspberry Pi website because very exciting news has just happened. Uh, Minecraft is coming to the Pi, the Pi, and I'll be doing a tutorial on that as soon as it comes out. So I hope you enjoyed my tutorial, and a challenge for you might be can you make a program that you can explain in a comment and it prints the phrase prints from a variable the phrase um, I love Raspberry Pi so that's just an idea for you and uh, I hope you can tune in to episode 2 and please watch all my other videos, subscribe, tell your friends I uh, hope you've enjoyed this tutorial as I said and if you've got any problems or want me to con uh, or you need to contact me or, if you've, or as I said if you have a project that you'd like me to know about and I'm, I'm really supportive of these emails, I love hearing from you guys then email me at the raspberrypiguy at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.